Okay, now that um, we're done here in Photoshop, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit more about uh, things that you can do in Revit. Um, when you go to uh, Hidden Lines, because of course we're probably not going to be just satisfied with the uh, material rendering. In fact, I, I want you all to be using the idea of um, bringing in perhaps your shadow layer. Uh, we may rely on the rendering to do that. But we might want to deepen the shadows, I don't know. Uh, but also um, just the line work itself. Uh, I, th I think it's, uh, it's good to try to meld the idea of uh, drawing and uh, rendering. And don't try to get too kind of absolute that uh, I'm trying to get photorealistic. Because really this is about getting ideas of architecture out and, and, and something that we can all... Uh, consume and so photorealistic is just is really kind of um, not necessary um, to work hard to get and also in some ways can be detrimental because if you're not even if you don't, don't get close to the photorealistic then that becomes an issue as opposed to it just being about your architectural ideas so um, let's talk a little bit about things that you have available to you in Revit when outputting this. Um, one of the things that you could do is go to additional settings under line weight. You'll see what's here is a perspective line weights. Uh, perspective bottom line weights control the widths for objects like walls, windows, and perspective views. There are 16 uh, model lines, which is insane. Um, but what you need to do, you might need to do, is kind of tweak these uh, to get the, uh, the exact uh, kind of uh, power out of them as you'd want. So um, I just want to make you aware that this is where you would go and you, you can just start editing these and, uh, and see kind of what you get. So uh, after uh, exporting these line weights, um, take a look at them and if you're to make sure my silhouettes are on. Um, yeah. Just make sure that you're kind of getting uh, what you're wanting out of the silhouettes and whatnot. So, um, all right. Let's just go ahead and I'll export this. And just check the crop size, make sure it's kind of big enough uh, to fit the scale. And then I'll just bring this in. Now, I could put this on a sheet and bring it in that way. Um, since it's a perspective, I don't really care about scale as much as I care about uh, what uh, the content is. So I can do it this way. Um, but if you're becoming, um, you know, plan section, you, of course you want to watch those videos, and you want to make sure that you uh, use the appropriate uh, use the appropriate uh, sheet size so you get the scale perfect. There seem to be some confusion on that, and you really need to make sure your scale is coming from Revit, and and then you uh, you put it on the sheet and, and do your compositing there. All right, let's see. This is the perspective cross. All right. Okay. Okay, let's take just kind of zoom in, take a look. All this line work, I mean, obviously there's a few uh, lines that, that are missing. That's always going to be the case. You're always going to have a little bit of tweaking to do. Um, and that's one of the nice things about a melding, uh, kind of layering up these drawings, is that the uh, 
you'll find with the layering, there's a kind of a, there's so much depth involved in all of that that uh, it doesn't become such a headache uh, to to correct because in fact with all the layers they they kind of start to cancel out any kind of errors. I mean there might be some drawing I do like here or, or you know get this kind of cut line to be really uh, a bit more exaggerated. But besides that. Uh, we can see that I'm, I'm getting pretty close. Okay, uh, one thing I might do is turn off these trees. And let's just do it one more time. Okay, now uh, that we have um, our output, at least the lines, and in fact, uh, let's just go ahead and let's turn on shadows and see if that is something that we want. So I'll go ahead and output that, and then I'll, I'll, I'll start this in Illustrator. The last thing I'm playing around with is I turned off my section box and I put this to transparent. I'm going to see if there's anything to kind of adding this extra layer. Uh, I don't know, it could be kind of a mess, but I'll, I'll try it and, and take a look at it. Uh, realize that once you've turned off your section box, you will not ever get it back. Well, unless you draw some kind of model line of where that section box is, you won't know exactly where to bring that section box back to. So this is really the last thing I'm doing uh, so that uh, because I've already lost kind of that placement so anyway here we go I'm gonna go into Illustrator and uh, begin to uh, put this all together once you get a method down um, this will become somewhat routine uh, you'll just uh, kind of always do certain uh, methods and, and if you're kind of doing it for a series of um, of uh, renderings uh, it'll, it'll become somewhat rote and that, that'll be good uh, you'll, you'll find that you're moving a lot faster and getting things, a lot of things done uh, easily and quickly First thing I'm going to open up, of course, is the uh, is this layer. Um, I've noticed that somehow uh, this kind of horizon line has shown up, so I get rid of that immediately. Um, the line weights look pretty good, so I'm just going to leave that as it is and start to create a new layer for each um, each drawing. So I'll have a shadow layer and I'll have a um, material layer and I'll have this transparent layer so we'll see if that works alright so I'll just start to import each uh, drawing Hopefully it kind of lands in the right place. Um, you can always check this by uh, changing its opacity. And in fact, uh, for my purposes, the, this layer, this line work, and I might kind of go ahead and call it that will always want to be at the top so it should be kind of really obvious um, 
And I'll just go ahead and lock it so I don't move any lines uh, accidentally. Okay, so that looks about right. It's kind of strange. No cast there. Alright, now I'll just go ahead and start placing each other out. You can see this came in a little bit smaller than the rest, so it's going to be, and this is because it, I went, I didn't control kind of pixel size when I went to the cloud to render this, so um, I'm going to have to work a little bit harder to get this kind of perfectly in line. Uh, you can be rather formulaic about this. Uh, I think I had this at like 3,000 pixels. You could find out what the pixel rate is coming straight out of Revit. So let me uh, pause this while I, I kind of attempt to to get this just okay. And now I'm going to throw on the uh, transparent layer. What I'm doing is locking the other layers so that I know that they're coming in at the right coming in, in the right place or on the right layer. All right, the one thing I'm seeing in here is if if I do use this entire kind of uh, space. I won't because this is actually a 24 by 36 inch sheet I think. So more than likely this drawing is going to get smaller but if I happen to I may want to kind of increase um, that size of the cropping just to kind of get line work up into that area. So I might just go ahead and print this one out again. Then I'll just update it. Okay. All right, that's a little crazy, but all right, we'll go for it. We'll see what we get. So you can see already, there's like a lot going on here. Let me make sure that it's uh, in alignment. Worst thing you can do is have things shifted off. It'll look like it's uh, out of focus. And things aren't quite crystal clear. So you do have to take some time to make sure that's uh, good. Alright, so what we can see already is that it's really noisy. Uh, with this transparent layer, so I'm going to immediately start to affect that by just turning it down quite a bit. So there might be just a hint of that going on. Alright, so then the other thing you might want to do is now that you're an illustrator and you can kind of control all the colors that you might be using, uh, this is a good time to um, start to think about that sky uh, what tone will, will it want to be, will it want to be uh, you know just kind of gray uh, keep it kind of neutral, will you go for a blue so I'm just going to do looking at something that's not too kind of over the top but just a little bit of something uh, let's see, much like what I did in um, in uh, Photoshop, so I'm going to need to create a layer for that. 